So, the embargo on the 6700 XT reviews ended today. And going into this review, I felt very little to be excited about. I mean, there weren't going to be many surprises. I've effectively known what Navi 22 is almost entirely since September. And in fact, since then, the info only became more verified and firm. Really very few surprises. Uh, in fact, I had access to review day information a week ago that was talked about on the last Broken Silicon. You know, the fact is, I think we've all known for a while that AMD has had a card coming that could at least partially be competitive with GA104, at least the cut down models, which I suppose both the 3070 and the 3060 Ti are technically cut down. Uh, and if they wanted to make it efficient, they could, but it would probably lose to the 3060 Ti. But if they really pushed it, they could kind of compete next to the 3070. Then they could probably charge a larger price, which would make sense given the current market conditions. Which, talking about increased prices, look, I, what I'm about to show you probably won't surprise that many people, but I, I figure I should just to have some people avoid sticker shock. There will be reference cards available from AMD's website, again, pretty much unlike NVIDIA uh, with their founders that was almost non-existent except for the scant few they send to Best Buy. But um, the majority of the AIB cards are going to cost a lot. In fact, here's a snapshot of some of the models coming out tomorrow. That's right, even a rebranded reference cooler is selling for about $100 above MSRP. Not good. In fact, from talking to retailers, the way I would summarize 6700 XT pricing is this. The floor is a bit below what the 3070 is. There will be probably slightly more models or even I should say slightly more volume around $500 than what you'll get with most of the things being sold with the 3070. But the ceiling, I mean, $785, as you can see there, it's going to be about the same as what the 3070 is selling for for a decent amount of the volume. So lower ceiling, but all, I mean, lower floor and pricing than the 3070, but the ceiling is effectively the same. And so, yeah, that's kind of why I've been apathetic. I didn't have much to expect and I knew there'd be high prices and people wouldn't be happy. And just to make sure we cover it, when we look at the actual performance, it's exactly what was expected. I was very skeptical of those benchmarks AMD showed at the 6700 XT reveal. I didn't think just smart access memory explained the performance they were showing. What I had always heard is that it was likely to be in between a 3060 Ti and a 3070. And those numbers, they looked very cherry-picked, taking a page out of NVIDIA's book, which was what was found from Linus, Hardware and Box, Gamers Nexus, every one I checked. This thing is... Fair to say, above the 3060 Ti in performance, and although there are definitely some weird cases where it's almost a 6800 non-XT, it, it, it is not really as strong as a 3070 unless VRAM is an issue, which, which VRAM is often an issue. I, I actually found in a Resident Evil 2, again, I had to turn down some VRAM settings to make sure even in 1440p, it didn't start getting some frame dips here and there. You know, 8 gigabytes really isn't enough for performance close to to a 2080 Ti, not, not in 2021. And so you might ask, what is there to report? It's the performance we expected. It costs about as much more as the performance it adds and AIBs are going to make a killing on these graphics cards. I mean, I don't know, I guess, I guess again, like I confirmed a couple weeks ago, is that they will supposedly be shipping quite a lot of these in the next two months. There might not be all of them to meet demand in the first week. I have to be very clear. Just because they're shipping a decent amount does not mean you will get one. That's not what I'm saying. But it does sound like they may be doing what I was hoping, which is overclocking these cards and using that small die in greater capacity than Big Navi because they can make more of them. It's just unfortunate that comes with a bigger price tag. So... I don't know. They're selling directly from their website, even if it's overpriced. So that should have some pricing floor in it, and they will be shipping a lot of them. So it will be supplied in higher volumes than previous launches. I've actually heard some pretty, pretty ridiculously high numbers, but I don't want to report them because people just get mad if they can't get a hold of one, whether the numbers are true or not. Um, so I, either way, I don't think it's going to be remotely enough to satisfy demand. Uh, I do think some people have more of a fighting chance than before, but um, yeah. What is there interesting to say? You know, I think I a lot of people will just churn out, oh, boo AMD, or ah, oh, deal with it. It's the market. It's demand. But I, I really think the more interesting, or for me, the most interesting question I can think of to ask regarding the 6700 XT launch is, what could AMD have done better? Well, 
first of all, I think the whole demand situation is what it is. It's just going to be there. Doing something to try to limit mining performance has proven exactly as useless an attempt as I said it would in my previous two mining videos. Mining firms have billions of dollars now. It's not gamers mining that are causing the problem. It's not even hobbyist miners with a couple rigs in their house that are causing the problem. It's billion dollar mining firms who can commission and program their own cards that are the problem adding to the demand issues right now. They hacked the 3060 right away. And in fact, now there's a driver out from NVIDIA that lets the 3060 mine. And I know they say it was an accident and I don't think NVIDIA intended that to get out, but there's a part of me that really suspects someone was put up to releasing that driver. I just don't know how something that specific can just come out right away. But I don't know. Let's not put on our tinfoil hats too hard on that one. The point is there's nothing that's going to be done that's to stop miners from trying to get cards. And in fact, I believe most of the demand issues are coming from gamers that want the newest stuff. Just look at how the consoles are selling out and those aren't being used for mine. Those <laughs> leaks of a PS5 mining have been debunked. Um, and everything on eBay, even old stuff is selling like crazy. The miners are not using a lot of those older cards selling on eBay right now. They're not. I mean, the only thing I can really think of to help gamers that AMD could have maybe done a really bold move is to say the cards only available from their own website for about one week and it will be at MSRP and AIBs are just going to have to wait a week and then they just put as many anti-bot and anti-scalper measures on their website as possible to try to make sure they're going to gamers. AMD could have done that. But from what I'm told, AIBs are loving AMD right now. At RDNA 2 cards cost significantly less to produce than the more complex boards that Ampere requires. AMD cards have high profit margins, higher than Ampere, below the ultra high end right now, as far as I'm told. And AIBs are loving the money they're making from this. And in fact, NVIDIA's usually had the best control and inroads with AIBs for well, forever. So I don't know that if you're AMD, you want to say we're going to make less money and damage our relationships with AIBs to win brownie points from gamers that so far have shown they don't care if NVIDIA screws them over, over and over. They'll just complain and buy them anyways. Uh, again, that doesn't, I know that might not make me popular to say that, but I think that's really what's going on here is AMD knows that they are making inroads with AIBs and well, if they can make extra money making better long-term relationships, that's something they're just going to do. So then you might argue, though, which I heard some people in my Discord argue, you know, should AMD have just had a higher MSRP so that it's less fake and they at least get more profits to put into R&D? And I think, I think a lot of people would argue MSRP means nothing, and it certainly means almost nothing right now. But when I look at the ceiling and prices on the 3070 and then the 6900 XT, it does to me seem like there is somewhat of a relationship between MSRP and the maximum street price. Somewhat. It seems like it's about 60% to 70% more than what the card sells for. In other words, I feel like if AMD would have charged $550 for the graphics card and like restricted it to be only sold from their website, I, I, I still kind of feel like eventually when the AIB cards hit, they would have been $900 instead of $785. And scalpers would have bought up a lot of them probably still anyway. So I don't really know that that would help. So what I'm kind of coming to is the best thing AMD can do to help the situation is not make the MSRP as high as possible, which they were considering 500. So they haven't done that. And then also try to switch as much of their graphics card capacity over from big Navi to little Navi because they can produce more of them and just try to buy up as much extra wafers as soon as possible as they can, which from what I'm hearing is what they're basically doing. You know, AMD has a financial responsibility to their shareholders to try to make as much money as possible. And they're balancing that with a, an attempt to get market share. So I, in some ways, I think they've done most of what they can do, but, well, I, I guess that there's just two things I have left to say then, and that's that, you know, when I look at this demand, I feel like gamers, and I know this will make me unpopular with some people, but I'm sorry, you got to take a look in the mirror. When I see the desperation to get some of the newest stuff, and how many people I see saying, oh, I couldn't get a 6800 XT, so I just bought a 3090 anyway, it's us. 
We are the ones raising the prices. AMD and NVIDIA have a obligation, literally legally to their shareholders to make as much money as possible. That doesn't necessarily mean short term. They have to balance that with market share and goodwill so they don't lose their fans. But what we're seeing is gamers are willing to pay more. And as long as gamers act this desperate to get stuff, prices are going to keep going up. Now, at some point, I do feel like, I feel like maybe we are overestimating what percentage of PC gamers are willing to pay for these prices. It seems like a lot more than a lot of people would like, but I do feel like, again, at least on the AMD side, as we saw in reviews today, AMD's RDNA 2 cards are really just for gaming. They're not as good at editing and um, productivity tasks as NVIDIA, that at least some AMD cards will start to meet up. I don't want to say they'll meet demand, but the $800 version of the 6700 XT can only sell to so many people that are willing to stomach that. I do believe prices won't be good, but they could start coming down a little bit in a few months. You know, eventually the question is going to become, does AMD respond eventually to make sure they keep taking as much market share as possible and try to win some goodwill back when they can? Which is to say, once you price a graphics card at a certain price point, it's sacrilege to raise the price after it comes out. You know, AMD can't just raise the price now and say, oh, we've decided it's 600 because everyone's buying it. However, they can lower the price in the future. And so I guess what I'm saying is this. I'm not sure what AMD can really do right now in face of in the face of unprecedented demand and, you know, just this crazy market where people will pay for any price for anything that's on the shelves. But when demand starts to meet supply, even at elevated prices, the real question will be if those 6700 XT start sitting on Newegg for 480 in stock for a couple of weeks, will AMD have the gall to slash the price to say $430? What I believe this graphics card should probably cost. But at the end of the day, the uncomfortable truth is that as long as there's a decent amount of gamers willing to pay any price for anything that's available, it's hard to say that there's much more these companies can do besides try to sell as many cards as possible. But there will come a time, I believe, in the next half year where supply starts to meet demand, at least, maybe not at MSRP, but at certain price points. And if cards start sitting on shelves for a while, will AMD slash prices a little bit to keep the market share from falling apart or to try to keep selling as many as possible? That's the real question. And that's when we'll really see what AMD is made of. Are they just going to become another Intel or not? Because right now, it's hard to say anything. Everything's just selling. And I don't think there's really much these companies can do anymore to fix it. And that is my analysis of the 6700 XT launch. Sometimes it's not always happy, but I do just try to give an honest impression and avoid either playing into anger or, I don't know, making a take that's too hot. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and ringing the bell button, sharing the videos and liking all that really does help so much right now in these times where let's say there's a lot of apathy going around. And uh, don't forget to watch the latest videos. The 3070 review is very highly well received from the people who watched it going over mid-range graphics cards and the latest broken silicon as well. Remember, if you do like all of this content I'm talking about, that we really do need your support. And it for just two or four bucks a month, you get a lot of exclusive content, access to a Discord, the ability to support questions for guests. We have another giant guest coming up soon. All of that is out there. Look for it. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.